We experience our life through the five senses. We also take a lot of decisions based on the input that we receive through these five senses. Sensory inputs which you receive in our life to take decision or to experience, are they valid? Do the present the reality that is there outside? A lot many scientific research have suggested that sensory inputs what we receive are not necessarily the truth. I'm talking about a massive decision, one of the blunders that has been done in the space of business decision making in corporates by a huge company, the Coca-Cola company. We would also look at a very unique neurological condition, which probably is an advantage for people who have got some special abilities to see sounds, taste colors or smell lights. And that again gives us some kind of an insight, sensory receptions are not always same or not always the reality. We'll get in and explore into an amazing aspect of how our senses sometimes can completely deceive us and at the same time it can also give us tremendous advantage because of some conditions inside. Let's get in and explore. We know there are two big, massive companies, Coca-Cola company and the Pepsi company. These two are the biggest in the space of beverages, the, the cola that we drink. And the cola war started in the mid 70s following a decision by Pepsi to come up with a campaign which is known as the Pepsi challenge in 1975, where Coca-Cola was the leader in the beverage industry and Pepsi came up with a unique campaign of inviting people to a live show and in that they would ask people to go and have a sip of Coke and Pepsi and choose which one tastes better. But while doing this, in order to ensure that they are not biased, these people were blindfolded and they would come have a sip of one and have a sip from the second glass and then they would say which one tests better. Most of the people in those shows, they chose Pepsi over Coca-Cola in terms of the taste. And this was kind of a little shock for the Coca-Cola company. And they wanted to check the veracity of such claims by doing the same experiments in their own space, in their own laboratories. They conducted and what they found was again shocking for them because they found 57 percent people would choose Pepsi over Coca-Cola in terms of taste. And this was definitely alarm button for the entire management to come up with some strategy. And for the first time in the history of Coca-Cola, they thought of even tinkering the so-called mystical legendary formula, which is there as a secret. And they asked the scientific team to change this formulation. This continued for almost two, three years with a lot of money pumped in, multiple iterations with every new version they checked. And then they come up with a formula in 1984, which was far beyond Pepsi, almost beating it hands down. And in 1985, on 23rd of April, they chose to launch this with a lot of fanfare, a lot of advertisement. They named it as New Coke. With a lot of enthusiasm, people had it, but within very few days, there were kind of backlash. People said this is not a good drink and slowly there were public unrest. So much so that there were rallies and there were protests on street of people of America saying that this is cheating with the Coke lovers. Coca-Cola company could not believe what they were hearing because after a lot of market research with actual feedback from the potential consumers, they developed this. But what happened? Within only 79 days, they had no choice but to bring back the old formulation. This was a disaster in the history of Coca-Cola. How come they could not understand the data? How come they misinterpreted? Now this prompted Coca-Cola to actually get deeper. Many researchers from different fields, they wanted to understand what exactly happened. Scientific research could find out that and scientists could actually explain this phenomena as sensation transference. For understanding sensation transference, we have to go back. 
In 1940s and 50s, Louis Cheskin, one of the most regarded, respected figures in the area of marketing research and brand development, who was also a psychologist and scientist, did a lot of research on how people perceive the products. And what Louis Cheskin checked and saw that people do not perceive products through only one sense. And this he could find out because of margarine. Margarine is a product which is very similar to butter, but it's an extract from the vegetables. Margarine came to market in 1940s, but it did not work. Although there was a lot of expectation from this product, but people said it is not of the taste of butter. So it was rejected. Many of the market research feedback from the market said that this product is not going to stand. And Louis Cheskin had a different opinion altogether. He said it's not about the product, something else is not working. And when he got deeper into it, he could see that the margarine is white in color, whereas butter is yellow in color. And Louis Cheskin chose to change the color, added artificial color to make it yellow. He gave the same margarine only with a change in color to people with bread and people say that the yellow one is much 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 better though this was the same margarine it was not different but people's experience of having yellow margarine was different from having a white margarine what Louis Cheskin suggested at that point in time is very powerful he said it's not just a psychological experience Actually, the product, packaging, color, all the senses are creating a combined experience, which is also probably a physiological process change inside, leading to a very different experience. And this he termed as sensation transference. Later on, there was an experimentation with 7up as well, which used to have a green bottle and they changed the color of the bottle to little yellowish. And see what people said. People said, why have you added lemon to 7up? Because this has completely changed the taste of 7up. Although there was no change in the composition. It was only the color which had changed. So what happens inside is very different because other senses also impact our experience. Although we use only test birds to have food or taste food, but other senses also impact that. In the Pepsi challenge, all the people who were tasting them were blindfolded. So the final experience was very different from that of when actually they take the beverage with their eyes open, looking at the brand and feeling the entirety of the environment while having Coke or Pepsi. This was only a concept, a theory till that point in time, but in later point, in the recent times because of the advancement in science we now can understand and see what is happening in the brain especially through fmris and other eeg machines we can see the activation of different parts of the brain and from there now scientists can figure out what's exactly happening in order to understand this further we need to understand a neurological condition called synesthesia where one sense is affected by other senses. Let me explain in some more detail. So synesthetes are kind of people who have got some special abilities to see sounds, taste colors or smell lights. So all these extraordinary qualities are there with the synesthetes. There are multiple kinds of synesthesia. Some people have graphene color synesthesia, meaning every time they look at an alphabet or a number, that seems to be of a particular color, meaning some people see five. Every time they look at five, they see it as red. When they look at nine, maybe they see it as green. When they look at two, maybe it's blue. So it's the experience that they have the moment they look at a number. Similarly, some of them also see alphabets like A is always yellow or N is always, let's say magenta. So there are multiple synesthesia, number, color synesthesia sometimes alphabet and color synesthesia known as grapheme color synesthesia. Some people have a synesthesia which is touch emotion synesthesia. Like a lady once came to Dr. V. S. Ramchandran who is a leading neuroscientist 
and she says that every time i touch steel i feel so depressed whenever i touch water i feel very elevated whenever i touch something coarse like cloth which is little rough i feel very sad touch changes the internal state and changes the emotion as well so there are multiple kinds of synesthesia but some of the scientists they had little confusion is this actually a psychological issue or is there a reality of their experience in order to check the reality of the experience they created a test which is normally known as in psychology it's known as the pop out test the pop out test in that there are a number of twos and fives on a slide in which at a particular place the twos are in a shape of a triangle now this slide is flashed out very fast before a group of audience where there are few synesthetes and some people are normal people now as it is flashed for a normal person it's very difficult to figure out which number is in which shape or in which arrangement but what they could find out that synesthetes could actually tell that two is in a triangular shape you can see those slides here for a normal person it looks like this but a synesthetes will see the shape in a particular arrangement because they can immediately see that in colors so had it been a psychological issue then they would have seen it consciously and then changed the color in the mind but since it was a subconscious process happening at a physiological level they could instantaneously see the arrangement and could say that that this is in a particular triangular shape so this gave them the conclusion that these people the synesthetes are actually having experiences inside now how and where does it happen it's been seen that there is a part called angular gyrus which is in the parietal lobe and this is kind of a junction box wherein all the senses come and they meet and that gives us the total experience of our environment now this junction box or angular gyrus is where also we have other experience like spatial experience feeling of space numbers few of these things are also coming there and scientists could now figure out that because of the intermingling of senses at that location it is very likely that at angular gyrus we are having inter or exchange of senses and influence of one sensory stimulus on others and does it give some kind of an advantage and research suggests yes there is a lady Kathleen Hova is a synesthete and Kathleen Hova is also a neuroscientist she is having auditory color synesthesia she is also a violinist and the moment she plays the violin she actually sees colors and she suggests that it gives us a lot of more advantage because not just that she can hear the note of that particular sound that particular music piece also she can see it in colors so in both way she is having more reception more understanding about that particular note about that particular piece of music and when people have multiple sensory input for the same kind of a stimulus they are having far more extra advantage because what we have seen that in scientists poets people who are extremely creative the percentage of synesthesia is far more higher in those groups like it's probably almost one third of scientists poets and creative people are synesthetes one more interesting finding is that in normal common population earlier they used to think that synesthetes are only one in few thousands but now modern research suggests one person in about 24 is having synesthesia so all of us probably we experience life very differently from others because our senses are somehow intermingled and giving us a very unique experience compared to others that's what is the finding of neuroscience in the modern time writers like vladimir nabokov who has claimed because of synesthesia probably he could become a writer similarly composer of the game of thrones and iron man ramin jawadi also says that because of his advantage of color 
and sound synesthesia he could come up with such wonderful music pieces now coming back to our discussions on sensory inputs and how we experience life because of this senses and not necessarily all the time what we receive through our sensory input is giving us the right information as we have checked we have seen in the case of the pepsi challenge where coca cola company completely got puzzled and baffled and took some decisions which were disastrous and also when we discuss about synesthesia we understood that sensory inputs are giving us experiences which may not be the same as others are experiencing them so environment is perceived very differently depending on how our different parts of the brain they combine them integrate them and give us the final experience of life in you know, from these two examples we can some way conclude that our truth can be different from others truth if you like the content of this video please do subscribe we are going to come up with a lot of interesting insight about human mind brain and experience of life which should help us to appreciate our life's journey better